The global conversation around green hydrogen is filled with optimism, ambition, and bold targets. Governments announce national hydrogen strategies. Corporations release glossy roadmaps. Headlines promise a hydrogen-powered future that will decarbonize industry, stabilize grids, and unlock a new clean energy economy. But beneath all of that excitement lies a harder truth that very few people talk about honestly. Green hydrogen is not a technology problem. It is not even an electrolyzer problem. It is a systems, economics, and execution problem. And unless those three layers are understood together, most green hydrogen projects will never move beyond PowerPoint. When people think about green hydrogen, they often imagine a simple equation. Renewable electricity goes in, hydrogen comes out, emissions disappear. But that mental model is dangerously incomplete. In the real world, green hydrogen is not a single technology. It is a tightly coupled system of power generation, power pricing, electrolyzer performance, water treatment, compression, storage, logistics, offtake structures, financing assumptions, and risk allocation. Every one of those layers interacts with the others. Change one assumption and the entire project economics can flip from viable to impossible. This is why so many green hydrogen announcements never turn into operating plans. It is also why the few projects that do move forward look very different from what was originally promised. Developers underestimate capital intensity. Investors misjudge risk. Policymakers oversimplify cost curves. And content creators often focus on the wrong bottlenecks entirely. To understand green hydrogen properly, you have to stop thinking like a technology enthusiast and start thinking like a project developer. A developer does not ask whether hydrogen is clean or promising. A developer asks how many kilograms per day can be produced, at what levelized cost, under which power price assumptions, with which financing structure, and under what downside scenarios. A developer asks how sensitive the project is to electricity price volatility, electrolyzer degradation, capacity factor assumptions, and offtake contract terms. Without those answers, nothing else matters. At the heart of every green hydrogen project is the electrolysis plant. This is where electricity is converted into hydrogen, and it is where most of the capital is deployed. But an electrolysis plant is not just a stack of electrolyzers, it is an integrated facility that includes balance of plant systems, rectifiers, transformers, cooling, water purification, compression, and controls. Each subsystem adds cost, complexity, and operational risk. Each subsystem also affects efficiency and uptime. Ignoring these details leads to wildly unrealistic cost projections. Electricity, however, remains the single most important variable in the entire equation. Even with declining electrolyzer costs, electricity still dominates the levelized cost of hydrogen. This means that the difference between a project that works and one that fails often comes down to power sourcing strategy. Is the plant connected to dedicated renewables, grid-connected renewables, merchant power markets, or a hybrid system with storage? What is the true delivered cost of electricity after grid fees, losses, curtailment, and balancing costs? What happens when power prices spike or renewable output drops? These questions are not theoretical. They determine whether hydrogen costs $4 per kilogram or eight. They determine whether a project survives its first five years or collapses under cash flow pressure. They also determine whether investors are willing to provide long-term capital at reasonable terms. This is where financial modeling becomes the backbone of green hydrogen decision-making. Without a transparent, flexible financial model, developers are essentially flying blind. A proper model allows you to stress test assumptions, run sensitivity analyses, and understand which variables matter most. It allows you to see how changes in electricity price, electrolyzer efficiency, capacity factor, or debt structure ripple through the entire project. Most importantly, it allows you to communicate credibly with investors, lenders, and off-takers. Before we continue, quick note for those of you who actually want to work with the numbers instead of just listening to theories. In the description below, I've linked the exact project finance and techno-economic models I use when evaluating green hydrogen, green ammonia, solar, geothermal, biogas, and long-duration storage projects. These aren't generic spreadsheets. 
They let you test electricity price assumptions, electrolyzer performance, storage sizing, and financing structures the same way real developers and investors do. If you're serious about understanding whether a project works in the real world, not just on slides, those links are there for you. One of the biggest mistakes new developers make is relying on static spreadsheets or high-level cost estimates. Green hydrogen projects are dynamic systems. They evolve over time. Electrolyzers degrade, maintenance costs increase, debt amortizes, revenues fluctuate, incentives phase out. A serious model must capture these dynamics over a multi-year horizon. Otherwise, the project may look attractive on day one and disastrous by year five. But green hydrogen does not exist in isolation. It competes with and complements other clean energy systems. In many cases, hydrogen only makes sense when integrated with broader energy infrastructure. This is where storage, grid services, and sector coupling come into play. Hydrogen can absorb excess renewable power, provide long duration storage, and supply hard to abate industries. But those roles only create value if they are structured correctly. Consider pumped storage hydropower. While often overlooked in hydrogen discussions, pumped storage remains the most mature and scalable form of long-duration energy storage in the world. In regions with suitable geography, pumped storage can stabilize renewable output, reduce curtailment, and provide dispatchable power for electrolyzers. Modeling the interaction between pumped storage and hydrogen production can reveal synergies that are invisible when each system is analyzed separately. It can also show when those synergies do not exist, saving developers from costly mistakes. The same applies to solar, wind, geothermal, and biogas systems. Each energy source has a unique production profile, cost structure, and risk profile. Geothermal offers baseload power that can dramatically improve electrolyzer utilization. Biogas can provide dispatchable renewable electricity while solving waste management problems. Solar offers low-cost energy but introduces intermittency challenges. Understanding how these systems feed into hydrogen production requires more than intuition. It requires numbers. Green ammonia adds another layer of complexity. Converting hydrogen into ammonia opens access to global shipping, fertilizer markets, and energy storage applications. But ammonia synthesis introduces additional capital costs, efficiency losses, and safety considerations. It also changes the revenue model entirely. Suddenly, the project is not selling hydrogen by the kilogram, but ammonia by the ton. The economics shift, the risks shift, the financing structures shift. Treating green ammonia as a simple extension of green hydrogen is a recipe for failure. This is why serious developers think in terms of integrated project finance models rather than isolated technology models. A project finance model forces discipline. It forces assumptions to be explicit. It exposes where optimism is doing the work of analysis. It also allows different stakeholders to speak the same language. Engineers, financiers, and policymakers may care about different metrics, but they all converge inside the model. For investors, the model answers a simple question. Does this project generate predictable, risk-adjusted returns? For lenders, the question is whether cash flows are sufficient to service debt under conservative scenarios. For developers, the question is whether the project can survive delays, cost overruns, and market volatility. If the model cannot answer those questions convincingly, the project is not ready. This is also where many public hydrogen strategies fall short. Targets are announced in gigawatts and millions of tons, but the underlying economics are rarely interrogated. Subsidies are assumed to bridge gaps indefinitely, but subsidies change. Political priorities shift. Projects that rely entirely on incentives without robust fundamentals are fragile by design. The projects that endure are the ones that work even when incentives are reduced or delayed. A realistic green hydrogen pathway therefore starts with brutal honesty. It starts by acknowledging that hydrogen is expensive, capital intensive, and operationally complex. It then asks how those challenges can be managed through smart system design, disciplined modeling, and realistic execution. That is not a headline-friendly story, but it is the only one that leads to operating assets. 
For developers and analysts who want to engage with green hydrogen seriously, tools matter. Not abstract frameworks, but concrete working models that reflect real-world constraints. Models that allow you to test scenarios instead of defending assumptions. Models that can be adapted to different geographies, power prices, and market structures. These tools are not shortcuts. They are safeguards against self-deception. The same is true across the broader renewable energy landscape. Solar, pumped storage, geothermal, biogas, and ammonia projects all require the same core discipline. Each technology has its own physics, but the financial logic remains consistent. Capital must be deployed efficiently. Risks must be understood and priced. Cash flows must be resilient. Ignoring these fundamentals does not accelerate the energy transition. It slows it down by wasting capital and credibility. What ultimately separates successful clean energy developers from unsuccessful ones is not enthusiasm. It is fluency. Fluency in how systems interact. Fluency in how costs behave over time. Fluency in how financiers think. Fluency in how small assumption changes can destroy or rescue a project. That fluency is built through modeling, iteration, and exposure to real project structures, not through headlines or hype. Green hydrogen will play a role in the future energy system. That much is clear, but it will not succeed everywhere, and it will not succeed automatically. It will succeed where electricity is cheap and clean, where utilization is high, where offtake is secure, and where capital is structured intelligently. Everywhere else, it will struggle. The purpose of serious green hydrogen content is not to convince everyone that hydrogen is inevitable. It is to help people distinguish between projects that are plausible and projects that are performative. It is to replace vague optimism with informed judgment. It is to equip developers, analysts, and investors with the tools they need to evaluate reality rather than narratives. If the energy transition is to succeed, it must be grounded in execution. And execution begins with understanding the numbers. That is the real story of green hydrogen. Not as a miracle solution, but as a demanding, complex, and potentially powerful system that rewards discipline and punishes shortcuts. Those who treat it seriously will build assets that last. Those who do not will continue to announce projects that never leave the drawing board.